the 2018 LS 500 is the fourth generation of LS. This is the flagship for Lexus. It all started with this car back in 1990. As a 1990 model, in the fall of 1989, they came out with the Lexus LS 400. This is the fourth generation. This is the newest iteration. The 2018 model is the first model year of the fourth generation. After the LS 400, as a 90 model, you had the LS 430, which is one of my personal favorites. Hopefully I can get my hands on one one day and own one. Then you had the LS 460, which we have a great F-Sport version here on the lot, but <clears throat> today's all about that car's successor, the LS 500, which just debuted this past fall as a 2018 model. LS 500 is gorgeous. This is the standard edition in terms of it's not an F-Sport. We also have an F-Sport here, but today I'm just gonna go over this edition. And it's not, I will never say it's a standard because it has so many extra features that we'll get into. Uh, but in terms of the exterior, we're gonna dive right into that. The running lamps are incredible. I've never seen an, uh, a running lamp or <clears throat> a day lamp with this sort of detail. These kind of look like eyelashes, but everything Lexus likes to do is in the, in the shape of L's. They also are in the shape of katanas. So you can see the sharp edge at the tip. Lexus is trying to do a lot with the Japanese heritage and styling and the artwork of the katana, one of the best blades ever made by mankind. Um, so that's where the, a lot of the design comes from, especially with these headlamps. The main lamps here, you have three LED, similar you see in the LC500, are these custom LED lamps that you don't see on any other car. And I just love the, the casings to them, it's just gorgeous. If we look at the spindle grille, it's, it's, it's pretty handsome. The F-Sport is a little bit more aggressive, but I see no problem with this in the front here. Here's the camera uh, for all sorts of reasons, mainly for safety, so for parking assist and then for pedestrian sensing. It'll stop the car if it senses a pedestrian. And then behind here, as well as up there on the mirror of the car, you're gonna have some more safety cameras built in um, to help stop the car in case it senses an accident and coming. So we have the, the optional 20 inch wheels here. Now, the, people are a little concerned about these wheels because these are chrome. Chrome isn't the most popular thing right now uh, on wheels, but when they are in motion, they look a lot better than standing still. I mean, they don't look bad. You know, if these were gunmetal, which I'll show the F-Sports uh, rims, if they were gunmetal or just uh, some sort of non-polished chrome, they would fit a little bit better, but they do go good with the chrome accents on the car. Handles are chrome. You see the chrome bar on the bottom of the doors there, and it keeps going on the rear portion of the car. The mirrors have chrome. The windows are surrounded by chrome. Of course, the grille has chrome as well. So, I mean, the wheels fit with the theme of this particular car, so I can't, I can't fault it too much for that. Um, looking around the back here, very clean. All right, so you might see these little fins that stick out here. These are called Vortex Simulators. You see them on a lot of Lexus vehicles. Actually, all of them have it in some shape or form, and you see it here as well. That helps reduce turbulence. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, the lighting's not the best. It helps reduce turbulence so for a smoother ride. Um, and on the RX models, they have them so the rear window doesn't get all dirty, um, which is a great little feature. There's the back. This is the all-wheel drive model. Um, the standard would be rear-wheel drive. And here we go as we finish on the side of the vehicle. She's a looker. It's a big car. You can see right now that it's pretty high off the ground. It does have an, uh, an air suspension, so I'm gonna see if I can lower it real quick. Press the button. Yep, the front's lowering. 
the rear is lowering. And this just makes it easier for people to get in the car. So the car's already finished lowering. It's, it's a fairly quick transition. We're gonna go ahead and pop the hood. It's right down here. Boom. There it is. Not a lot to see in here. It's all covered up by plastic, but that's okay because this is really all that matters. This is the twin turbo. It's the first time Lexus has implemented this engine. It's brand new. It's a three and a half liter. Now, most other Lexus vehicles employ the three and a half liter. You see it a lot in the, the RX, but this is completely different. It's, it's, it's far superior and more updated than the three and a half liter that you see in your other vehicles. And of course, it's twin turboed as you just saw in the badge. Uh, this is the first time Lexus has put a twin turbo uh, in a vehicle, to my knowledge. Um, and this is the first time the LS employs a V6. All other LS models from the 400 to the 430 to the 460 all employed a V8. And the V8 got bigger with each iteration. This is the smallest displacement Lexus has ever put in their LS, yet it produces the most power and the most torque. I want to say it's like 442 foot-pounds of torque and it comes real early in the rev range and you can see the 416 horsepower here. It's just a, an incredible vehicle. It doesn't quite keep up with some of the, the twin turbo V8s that you see in your European uh, counterparts of this vehicle, but for the average person, this is, engine's going to be plenty. We're going to pop the trunk here before we get inside and check out the incredible interior automated trunk as you would expect so this has this standard upholstery mats in here because the all-weather mats are inside um, so it doesn't look that clean right now the the trunk is pretty big the rear seats do not fold down it does come with this net so this net is the most advanced <laughs> net I've ever seen um, so you can see down here that the net can fold up and zip into this net container so if you don't want, if you want to, you know, take off the net, you can zip it up in there and no problem. There's also hooks up here, and I messed around with this yesterday, hooks here and hooks here. I think for the mat or for the net to connect up there. So if you have something that's you don't want sliding around in the back, you could also hook up the net there and it just tightens things down. Um, we have the manual back here. Uh, we have a first aid kit back here as well. Uh, you also have these straps. I don't know what they're here for. Your guess is as good as mine. But I'm sure you could strap something down with that. There is no spare tire back here because this runs on uh, run flat tires. If we look underneath here, we have a nice little trunk light. And then up here on the lid of the trunk. So let's, of course you have the button that's gonna bring it down. You have, if you get trapped in the trunk, look, it's glow in the dark. It gives you instructions, okay, to open the trunk and run out, you need to pull this. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then you have this little handle here. I don't know what the purpose for is for it. My guess is to, to pull it down, to pull down the trunk lid, um, but it's there if you want it. And there's also a light here. So you have two lights in the trunk. That's, that's pretty cool. So we're gonna close that, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the party in the inside, which is gonna be a long video. We're in the inside of the LS500. I spent about 40 minutes in here yesterday in quiet, observing, appreciating, exploring, and just in awe and amazement of what we have in here. So um, let's just start with uh, the door. Why not? So this handle here is actually the same handle you're gonna see in the LC500. It's, it's uh, like a polished plastic. Now, I love the look of it, but these materials collect fingerprints very well. So uh, if you see over here as well, these aluminum, I don't know, my guess is that they're aluminum or some sort of polish, but they collect fingerprints and 
it is what it is. You can't, you can't prevent everything from happening. But anyways, I digress. So the material in here is exquisite. I actually can see it better to right now because it's not so bright out. So you see the chevron pattern of wood here. It's gorgeous. All the other videos I've seen online, they have either uh, like a, a checkerboard aluminum or metal finish or the glass finish, which is cool, but it's a little gaudy for me. But this is perfect for my taste and the chevron and the just the different colors you see in it are perfect. It is a part of like, I'll show the, the window sticker. It's like a $12,000 option where you get this wood, um, this steering wheel. This steering wheel continues with the wood. Now it's not chevron wood, but it's a dark, dark wood. You're not, it, it goes very well with this type of pattern. And it's wrapped in leather. Now I saw it, this, this similar steering wheel, at least design in um, this Jaguar we have on the lot. But man, this looks good. Usually Lexus just stops right here with the leather, then it's full wood. But it, excuse me, they do wood and leather and it's just, it's, it's perfect, it's gorgeous. Back to the door, because there's so much going on here, I've only covered a few, a few things. Um, so this is obviously your memory seat. The stitching here, this reminds me a lot of the LC. Everything is soft touch except obviously the wood. Soft touch, soft touch, soft. Even, even down here, this plastic here that my thumb's touching, that's soft. Everything in here is nice and snug. Oh, no, that's soft too. Okay, it's not leather, but it's soft. Um, so the stitching's perfect in a Lexus. You're not gonna find better stitching anywhere on the earth, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so what's really cool about these doors that I can't get over, reminds me of a freaking spaceship, is that the this whole control panel here and this armrest is floating. Like, look, I can just put my arm around it and just go all the way around with my finger. It's floating. It's, I mean, there is a connection back here on the side, but it, I've never seen anything like it. And it just, it also makes it feel like the cabin's even bigger because it, the door kind of hollows out here. It's hard to see, but it makes room for this instrument cluster here on the, on the side. Um, so let's move on from there. This button here. This is what it does. It scopes out the area around the car. You can also change the color of this vehicle on here by pressing this button. Um, it's not a touch screen, but you'd use the touch pad, which I'll get more into. But it, it just checks the surroundings for safety. I don't know if I would ever use this feature, but I guess it's, it has some purpose. It's just cool to kind of see what's around your car. It lets you know if you can't see outside your windows for some reason, what is within a couple feet of your car in every direction. Um, so it plays a little video. And then this is another thing. It's just another view of the same process. So it just gives you more of a cockpit view of what's around your car. Pretty neat. Checking surroundings for safety. I don't, I don't really understand it, but I'm sure there's some usage of it uh, for some someone. Now usually the drive modes uh, are, are here in most other Lexus vehicles, but with this new model, um, they cleaned this up. So this whole area here is just uh, breathtaking. So they continued with the wood here on the side with the middle is this pattern I just can't get over. It's just so cool. And they got rid of that stupid mouse. I hated the mouse. Some people like it, that's fine but they got rid of it, they simplified it, decluttered, and you have this touchpad here which controls everything on the screen. Uh, let's just get back to the navigation screen or the menu screen. And what's cool is that, you know, the, the navigation is hidden in the background so you can still what's go see what's going on as you're selecting everything on the main screen. I'm not gonna spend any time going into the screen because, like, it's just, it would take an hour for me to go through everything on there. And it is it is what it is. You have the nice 12.3 inch screen here, um, navigation included, Bluetooth. It does not have Apple CarPlay to my knowledge. Uh, the new ES is gonna be the first vehicle that has it. And it doesn't have the, the Google um, version of Apple CarPlay. It's escaping my mind right now. Um, but it doesn't have that either. So let's let's step back here. 
So that's a 12.3 inch monitor. Here we have, I believe it's an eight inch monitor, but holy cow, it's wrapped in leather. Why not? It's gorgeous, you see the beautiful stitching. Now on the F-Sport model, they actually have a physical dial that moves back and forth. And if you wanna see what the F-Sport looks like um, in the LS, just look at like an RC F-Sport. Like the video I did yesterday or a couple days ago in the RC F-Sport, the sliding mechanism on the speedometer is the same, okay? So, but I actually like this. I'm not gonna say better, it's just different and I like this quite a bit. Um, you have your actual physical gauges here and of course you can see this is an LCD because it's kind of flickering on, on the phone. Um, the steering wheel's wrapped in leather in the middle. I talked about the outsides already. Now they moved a lot of the, so the cruise control used to be here like on a normal uh, Lexus or Toyota but they moved it all onto here. So your cruise control, your radar adaptive cruise control, your lane departure assist, um, <clears throat> it's all here on the steering wheel. Here we have, uh, this is a new fob. This feels different for me, but of course this just has your lights. Here's your windshield wipers. Your, these things are massive. These paddle shifters are the biggest paddle shifters I have felt on a Lexus before. Uh, they're big. They feel like big elephant ears, which is fine. You don't want to, you know, if you want to be in sport mode, you don't want to miss the shifter. Uh, but they, they're, they are magnesium. They heat up. Um, if the car's sitting in the sun, these things get kind of hot. All right, so let's let's look. Take a step back. Uh, look above here. This is your traction control. You can go to snow. Does it say anything? Is that say snow mode? Um, you can press traction control off by pressing in. Um, and that's it. Okay, so traction control is off. Um, but yeah, that's it. Turn it back on, there's snow. All right, and then you press it in again to resume normal traction control. So what it should say, in my opinion, is off and on because it doesn't tell you how to turn it back on. All right. So you press it down, it's gonna say off, and you press it down again, it says it it, it turns it back on. So um, if we look here at the, uh, the basic functions, I like this so much um, because it's so simple yet effective and efficient with its space. Um, of course you have your CD player down here if you still use such a thing. This just has your temperature, and of course it's gonna reflect the temperature on the main screen as well. These lines here go all the way across the dash. So all the way from here, and it finishes with the cluster, and then it continues just a little bit here uh, with some real tight pattern of those same lines. I don't know if it's supposed to be interpreted as anything. I've been mentioning those samurai swords uh, as a part of they want to implement in that, their car subtly. Um, and then you have this design here. Now, in the future, they might just add another monitor. I don't. I wish it was just blacked out because it's just like, wait, is what is this? Is it supposed to be for something? No, it's just a design. And you see this design a little bit with these lines here. Um, but I would say you see this design more so in the, uh, is it called the, I think it's the executive package is what it's called, where the doors, and I'll show a picture, the doors have pleated, stitch pleats in it as well as um, that that glass uh, finish by the door handle instead of this nice wood chevron but I like this it's way more subtle it's not like jumping out at me it's just it's perfect um, this dark brown material here you see this cross stitching making some diamond uh, patterns it's pretty neat this does have the all-weather mats in it and this does have the upgraded sound system. It has 23 speakers, over 2,000 watts of sound. Like, I don't, I, that's, to me, that's just mind-blowing. Um, but anyways, let's go up here to the mirror. Um, nothing, nothing crazy here. I always got to check myself out while I'm doing it. Look okay, I got something in my eye. That's fine. You got speakers above. Because if you have 22,000 plus watts of sound, they got, it got to come from somewhere. 
Here's a uh, holder for your sunglasses. That's super important, especially if you live in the south or if you like driving this thing in the summer. Anyways, all right, so let's go back over um, the shifter. Let's go over the shifter, why not? So the shifter here, you press park to go into park. All right, hold down the brake when you wanna shift, but you go to the left, that's neutral. Down is gonna be drive. Left, up is gonna be reverse. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in park. Oh, you can get it, you get an idea of the backup camera here. It's a little, um, blurry for my liking but what's cool it has the top down thing as well so you can see what's around your car not just behind you so I think that's a great feature I'm gonna put it back in the park and there we go back to the main navigation screen all right so I already touched this button earlier it lowered the car down this my friends is a sight to behold and this is gonna start all of the, I'm not gonna get into every single feature here, but you can adjust every single aspect of your chair, head, the sides, the bottom sides, the upper back, your thoracic, your lumbar, your ass position, and lower lumbar. Like, it's crazy. Um, if you have your passenger seat, I can do it from here as well. Um, now, keep in mind on the passenger seat, as well as the driver's seat, you will have secondary controls here. So you can control it manually, like old school, which I would rather do, but you can also control it through here as well, which is cool. Um, seat climate, you can control the heated seats from here, um, which is cool. You can control the rear seats from here. It's, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't know this system that well, and I'm sure there are more videos online about it, but I'm just gonna go over the basics of the car um, and not diving too much into the infotainment because it's, it's a little redundant for most people. All right, so I think, I think we can, no, no, we're not gonna depart for the back seat quite yet because this button, which is one of my favorite buttons in all Lexuses, this is the magic. This controls the automatic shades right here. So let's see if we can see the magic happening when I press this button. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Goes all the way down. There we go, she goes back up. Now the old LS had that, of, of course. Um, and even ESs, I see that in ESs, but it never gets old for me. Now, this does have the panoramic sunroof. So let's dig into it. This thing is really cool. So you can control the shades of the sunroof. Usually, from, I don't, from my knowledge, I've only seen manual shades where you just pull the cover. There's no cover for me to pull. There's nothing here for me to pull, okay? So we're just gonna press forward here on the button and it's automatic, it's going on its own. And now we're in complete darkness, except for the rest of the windows. Um, but here we go. We're gonna open it here. And then you just keep pressing this button. It starts with tilt and then it, the same button controls the uh, forward and rearward sliding of that, all right? And we're gonna fold it back up here. There it goes, it's going. Bye, son. Before I head in the back seat, What's also awesome about this car, it has like this suede soft touch material all throughout the vehicle. It's, it's hard to see, but it's plush everywhere in this car. Even the rear seats, the rear uh, panel there, or the rear uh, pillar I should say, is covered in that soft suede material. I forgot to mention your driving modes are up here. They used to be down here. They're up here now. Um, so your Sport Plus, does it change? Yeah, it changes the, uh, the visual of the speedometer. Okay, you press in for normal, you spin it down for eco or comfort, and then it's gonna be eco. But who drives an LS to be in eco mode? So normal or sport is the way to go. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the, wait! We're not going to the back seat because this is my favorite feature arguably in the vehicle. 
Okay, maybe not, but it's pretty cool. So this button, okay, it opens from the side. All right, so big deal. It's my console. I can move this thing around. You have your USB and your, um, your auxiliary and then a 12 volt here. Whatever, not a big deal, but check this out. If I'm sitting on this side, which I'm gonna move the camera over, hopefully you can see, you just press it and it opens the opposite way. So if I'm on this side, I open it opens this way. So it opens to the direction of the person who's opening it. How cool is that? Super cool, blows my mind. But I think that sums it up for the front cabin. We're gonna go ahead to the back where the party is gonna be happening, where you guys are gonna be sipping the bubbly smoking your cigars, making your $104,000 Lexus smell like, uh, I don't know, Cuba. All right, guys, there's just so many things for me to cover. So before I get into the back seat, let's just check up the heads up display. This is an e industry leading, I believe it's 18 inches, um, but I'll put, I'll put the window sticker up there, which it says it. Um, but there's the HUD. I, it's probably customizable, but like I said, I'm not gonna dive too much into um, the infotainment. Uh, looks like you have a speedometer, your lane keep assist, as well as a compass. So everything you would need. Uh, I saw in the new BMW M5, like it's completely customizable, um, but it, I mean, it looks really good from my point of view. And the, and the camera, it looks flashy, but it's, it just looks solid and stable uh, from my point of view in the pass, or I mean the, the driver's seat. Okay, let's get in the back seat. I'm not gonna dilly-dally anymore. There's probably a hundred more things for me to cover in the front seat, but this video has gotta end sometime. Okay, I'm greeted with champagne and cigars back here. The window shades are up, you can see that. Now, not only is there a window shade here, and just look at the pattern. And the pattern's like thought provoking. You have another shade here. And not only do you have another shade there, I didn't even know there was a window back here until I saw this shade go on. All right. So, speaking of these shades, we're going to get into how you move them around. So, this is the armrest. You could fit three people back here. Okay, it's a huge car, you should be able to, but yeah. Let's just pull this down. I'm gonna pull down the third seat. This is an option. Not every single LS has this. I don't think our F Sport has it. So this is a part of that $12,000 option with this upgraded interior, uh, with that wood finish, the fancy steering wheel, the plush uh, overhead, the upgraded sound system, this um, skylight. I can't think of the right word panoramic sunroof it has it all okay back down here we're gonna press the home button turn on yes you have your own screen back here it's amazing shade lamp okay you can turn the lights on with this button these buttons here you can also manually turn them on here on the ceiling okay um, but why why strain your neck if you don't need to so you just use uh, the buttons here now, we're gonna open the roof from back here with one button, so, say hello to the sun again. All right, there's the roof. There's the rear sunshade. There's, watch this so you can get all three uh, sunshades in it at once. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. It's just so good. This is so good. Now, I don't know if you notice this, this so the sunshade lives in this little flap here. Watch it pop up. It just pops up, no big deal, no big deal. So it just lives in the door. Um, just, it's just so cool. All right, so let's, let's make things a little bit darker in here. Let's close, right? Close the roof with this guy. And let's close the rear shade here. All right, now let's just appreciate the interior back here. We have this intricate cover. Now this cover in other models I think looks a little out of place, 
but it matches the dark brown theme of this vehicle as you see everywhere it's just it's so good it reminds me of chocolate which is like my favorite food so you have this interesting pattern here I don't even know what to call it um, but it reminds me of like little tiny chocolate chips again you have that same chevron dark wood pattern that you don't notice unless you look deeper at it and of course you can see how glossy it is same handles as you have in the front you have a side vent here now guess what you have more of this chevron pattern here on the back seat i've seen some f sport models that just have like oh you know they don't have this at all it's just straight leather um, these are huge this reminds me of a largemouth bass you could fit a small library in here uh, it's beautiful of course you have your all-weather mats i have tons of space another 12 fold down here oh i didn't notice this yesterday but you have this chevron pattern again oh stop it you have of course vents back here but why wouldn't you have more vents other than this cool side one so let's get into the meat and potatoes guys let's get into the fun stuff okay so we have climate control back here we have uh heated and rear ventilated seats you can control the radio from back here you uh we talked about climate but there it is the seat i played around with this for like 20 minutes yesterday playing with the seat i'm not going to get into it but you just touch what part of the seat you want to control and it kind of tells you what it's doing um, of course you can feel what it's doing because the seat's moving but you can see what it is and of course these are memory seats too right you have two memory settings back here and if you can see up there you have three memory seatings uh, for the front seats passenger and driver side same theme of the doors in the back as you do in the front and then here is the floating uh, side rest the armrest it's just so cool and you, you have a small pocket down here that's really hard to see, but it's there. It's not very big, uh, but it's all soft materials. Speaker, speaker, speaker. And then I, I don't know if this is a speaker, but I think it is, right? Because when you have 23 speakers, you got to put them everywhere. So I think this is a speaker. The whole back part is speakers. And then you have your car seat hooks too, if you need that, all right? Pretty neat. And even the design behind the freaking chair, guys, look at where the seat belt comes out of look how detailed that is it's surrounded by polished no it's crow it's like a chrome sur uh, surface and then you have like this leather back here as well but these seats recline almost all the way uh, you can t easily take naps you can set even the headrests like you can in the front seat the headrests move around uh, which is neat um, here's the mirror it does allow for crotch shots so that's a nice feature if you know if that's what you want to do but you know it also allows for you to change your makeup or you know make sure there's any is there anything in my eyes no nope. how's my hair okay it's good it's fine it's a mirror but it has the the ability for crotch shots which, which if you're into that that's cool oh my gosh there's there's lighting down here and i just hit the window and the window the window button automatically did the shade so I'm finding stuff out by accident so the windows one touch all the way down nice and flush we're gonna press it again just once all the way up I'm not holding anything but there's lights under here how cool is that um, now I can't tell you what the car looks like at night in terms of interior lighting but there's lights underneath the handle up there as well super cool this is what that panoramic sunroof looks like from the top it's just a bunch of glass it looks really sharp. Alright guys, this is going to be my first drive. I'm going to get out of the parking lot here and start driving this thing. I'm not going to floor it. Um, I'm going to get in the gas a little bit, but this is a $104,000 car that's not mine. Um, I'm going to respect it. It will respect me. And uh, I'm ready to start driving this thing. I've been daydreaming in it for the last two days, just you know, getting familiar with it. I guess you could say I've been whining and dining it here in the parking lot but we're just gonna get out on the streets heads up display looks great as like I said uh, in the parking lot sitting there it looks fine the seats a little far back I'm just gonna move it forward so luckily it still has the manual car or the the seat 
configurations on the side because I don't want to be configuring while I'm driving. Um, I don't want to wreck this nice car. So it's nice that it has the, the seat configurer on the side. And yeah, so now, okay, cool. So on the heads up display, as I was approaching the stop sign, a stop sign showed up on the heads up display by the speedometer, which is super cool. The, of course, the compass on it is constantly updating, telling me which direction I'm going. I still need to be a little bit farther forward. So I'm still adjusting my seat. Good, you guys can still see me. The mirror is fine. All right, here we go. So that was cool in the heads up display. There was a car coming, I was easing out into traffic a little bit. Um, and it beeped as well as gave me some yellow lines telling me, or yellow arrows telling me which car on the intersection where it was coming from. Okay, so I'm gonna get on the on-ramp here. I'm gonna give these cars in front of me some space so I can feel what the, this twin turbo 416 horsepower 442 foot-pounds of torque feels like getting onto the highway here. Um, I'm just in normal mode. I'm gonna give them some space. I wanna say this car does zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds. Okay, giving them some space, giving them some space. Let's slowly roll onto the throttle. Okay. Okay, it moves. And you guys can hear, and it tells me the speed limit, of course, on my heads up display. I was going 60 into 55. But you guys saw it got up and boogied, no problem. Uh, and that's zero to 60. Now we have, I mean, it's it's eight o'clock, so traffic's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty tight here, but uh, blind spot monitors are working great, and they seem to be brighter than they are in the RX. So much appreciated on the blind spot monitor uh, indicator on the mirror. Um, speed limit also, not only is it on the heads up display, it's also on my main speedometer monitor. So that's awesome. Okay, we're going to put it into Sport Plus mode. Now again, that makes the, the speedometer turns red uh, and it makes it much more aggressive looking here. I'll let you guys see. There's what it looks like. And again, there's that heads up display that shows the speed limit. Yeah, I'm going a little bit over, but people are passing me. So looks like I have a Corvette coming up my rear left. I'm not gonna race it. Sorry to get you guys excited. I shouldn't have said anything. Um, but this car, I mean, what does the ride feel like? Okay, so I've been talking about some of the features. The ride's smooth. I'm in a construction zone right now, so I feel some of the bumps. But, I mean, it's a vehicle. You're gonna feel a little bit of bumps no matter what. Now, I'm just going in straight lines. I'm not on a, on a windy road. But from what I, the research I've done, this car handles better than any LS that ever has come out in the past. Um, it's, it's just a phenomenal vehicle. It's so well-rounded. Is it the fastest luxury sedan? No. Is it the slowest? I don't think so. There's probably slower ones. Um, does this feel more polished than any other luxury sedan and its price point? Yes. Is it more polished and is the interior better than any other uh, sedan within $50,000? Yes, there's no question this car I mean, the interior, I spent like 30 minutes in this video just drooling over and I didn't cover everything. Um, this car is super easy to drive. Uh, I'm just, this is the first time I've driven it. I'm not distracted by any of these features in here. It's just, it just works really, really well. Um, the cabin noise, I don't really hear anything other than a little bit of road noise. Uh, let's see if I can hear this trailblazer coming up on my rear left. I can even hear it pass. Just slightly. Ever so slightly I could hear it. Uh, and then we got a big truck coming. Let's see if I can hear it. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, you're going to hear things on the road. All right. Now what's cool is when I get into the gas, it amplifies the sound through the 23 speaker system.
so I just floored it there um, and you guys heard the engine it sounds good it sounds good it sounds better than the three and a half liter non-turbo that you find in the RX um, it sounds definitely more throatier than that so we got some clear road ahead of me I'm definitely going way under the speed limit right now and I'm just gonna punch the throttle a little bit it's plenty now this car is fairly heavy so it doesn't feel like a sports car but it feels really good and confident um, and the sound that it makes it, it just makes you want to smile going on a turn right here board up the on-ramp so I got I got to the speed limit on the on-ramp about a third of the way onto it so if you have a full car full of people, of champagne sipping gentlemen and gentlewomen, you're gonna have no problem lugging them around. Um, and they probably don't want to be floored everywhere anyways. So, uh, but yeah, I would, <clears throat> this thing has plenty of power. You're never gonna feel like you need more unless you're like an adrenaline junkie. But this car is not for adrenaline junkies. This car is to, is a piece of art if you're a sophisticated person you like going to art shows you like having the finest of the fine things in life in my opinion this car that's what it's made for um, are there more expensive vehicles yeah you can get a Bentley you can get a Rolls-Royce you can get a Mercedes-Benz which car if you include Lexus in there which car is gonna last the longest which car is gonna have the least problems which car is going to have the best interior? Well, I think Lexus is at the top of all those things. Which car is the fastest, not the Lexus? But that's not what this car is about. It's about the full package. You get beautiful interior, beautiful exterior. It's a piece of art. It's reliable. It's confidence inspiring if you do want to push it. It does allow you to push it just fine. I'm gonna get over here. There's a looks like there's an accident up here. I'm gonna get all the way over. Slow down quite a bit. But again, the brakes, the brakes felt perfectly fine here. Uh, never. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Um, it looks like a, a lovely PT Cruise. Oh man, there's a lot of vehicles involved. Still don't know what's going on. Uh, don't know. It did look like a PT Cruiser ran into the back of a, of a truck, but that was just the beginning of the pileup. No one was hurt. There's no ambulance out there, so that's the good news. This car does have a 10-speed automatic transmission, similar to the, the one in the LS. It might, I think it's the exact same transmission as the one in the LS, actually. Um, and you're going to get great fuel mileage on the, the highway. Uh, it looks like... Here, let me, let me see if I can turn down the rear shades. It looks like it's 20, 21 combined, 18 in the city, and about 26 on the highway. I'll show the window sticker just to confirm or deny uh, what's, what it actually gets. But I can see you guys easily getting 30 miles per gallon, doing 70 miles an hour in this vehicle just because it has so much torque and it has the 10 speed transmission. Um, so it's gonna be, with the, the torque and the flexibility of the amount of gears you have, once you're on the interstate and you're just like on cruise control, you're gonna be getting 30 plus miles per gallon. Uh, and like the, the, it's like that in the LC as well. The LC gets really good mileage uh, because it has so many gears. Um, but that's that's a different video if I ever get my hands on an LC. I want to go over the brake feel real quick. The brakes feel strong. They're very linear, very Lexus uh, predictable. Uh, and that's to me that's what's most important on a brake pedal is you want it to be predictable. Uh, if it's real grabby in the beginning, I don't like it. I want to be able to have a nice linear progression of brake feel and application. And this, this card, it's perfect. So the speed limit on the heads-up display 
If you're going over it, so I'm slowing down, I'm getting off the freeway. If you're going over the speed limit um, indicator that, um, that shows up, surrounds itself in orange to let you know like, hey, you're, you're, uh, you're going over the speed limit. Um, and then also it has the lane, lane keep assist. So on the heads up display with the lane keep assist, if you're getting close to one of the lines, it'll start blinking. If you're right in the middle, both lines are are solid, okay? And if you're going over one of the lines, it kind of gives you this blue grid looking line. It's hard to explain, but it lets you know that you're going over that line as well as the steering wheel is gonna vibrate. So we got some twisties here. I'm gonna get outside the car here in a little bit and um, take a picture by the lake. Uh, so you guys can appreciate the beauty of this vehicle. Take this turn pretty tight here. Hit the throttle on the apex. There we go. Yeah, it, it feels good. It feels planted. There was not a whole lot of body roll. And everything feels so smooth in the middle of the turn as well. Um, no, no little... No signs of uneasy easiness or skittishness it's just very well planted hello gs there's a gs over there just enjoying this beautiful park well, i'll get out and kind of walk around the vehicle again so you guys can see what it looks like by the water we got some geese down there and some geeselings is that what you call a baby goose a, a geeseling because a baby duck is a duckling do you call a baby goose a goose a gooseling let me know guys, put it in the comments, all right. Around again, park buttons here. I'm gonna get out of the vehicle. Hopefully no one steals it. I'm just kidding, no one's gonna steal it. No one's at this lake right now. That's the door. All right, here, here's what she looks like at the lake. All right, so um, anywhere you take it, the natural beauty is going to uh, be brought out as well as any Lexus, you just park it in nature and it just looks good. It looks like it's a part, it's one, it's one with nature, just like the Japanese culture. But it's just a beautiful car, guys. Can't say enough about it. Uh, if you have a hundred grand, you couldn't spend it much better anywhere else than on an LS. But that's about it. I think I'm gonna finish up this review. Uh, there's not much else for me to say about it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But this is the 2018, the most uh, updated LS model, the most finely polished, the most well equipped, the best looking, the most powerful, uh, the most techno technologically advanced 